Do 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 do. Hey, how's it going? Nancy Gammon. I'm just getting ready to make a necktie poncho. In the last video, I sewed together 10 neckties end to end in a process called strip quilting that made a big long piece of necktie fabric. In this video, I'm going to take that big piece of fabric and turn it into an unusual wearable art piece. All right, this is the result of all that sewing. One long, pretty strip of fabric with lots of blues and greens, lots of stripes. Since everything is going in one direction, I'm gonna look for areas that I can cut out and just shift the design 90 degrees so that there will be some horizontal stripes mixed in with the vertical. I'm also gonna look for areas that don't seem quite right to me visually, and I'm gonna cut into those um, to break up the kind of dead spots a little bit. So I'm gonna think about which areas I can turn seems pretty nice together. I'm going to use some pins so that I can keep track of what I've got going on here. So I'm not worrying uh, about matching the links of the pieces, although if something is way off I might need to put two together in order to make a comparable length, but it's okay for the overall hem to be jagged or have some interest there. So I think this looks pretty good. I'm gonna take it over to the sewing machine and get these areas stitched up where I have pinned. And then I'll come back and show you how it turned out. One thing I neglected to mention earlier is that one side of the fabric is pretty even while the other end is jagged. But I've got things sewn together and there's some more visual interest than there was before. Lines going both vertically and horizontally. But I really have too, too much fabric. It's longer than what I need. As far as putting together a poncho goes, what seems to work well is to start with something around 70 inches long and about 18 inches wide. So I have about 35 extra inches in length and some areas that just aren't quite long enough. So it also tends to be really wide at one end and pretty narrow at the other. So I'm gonna chop off this narrow end. I'm just gonna cut off this last 35 inches and I'm going to use that to fill in the areas that are a little short, that aren't as um, wide as I'd like for them to be. I mentioned that this edge is even, but I didn't tell you why. It's even because this is going to be the neckline and so this jagged area is going to be the hemline of the poncho. This even line is going to get sewn onto itself to form a side seam, so it's helpful to have that be even. Um, and there's also a strip of 
necktie fabric that's going to create kind of an accent or a collar there. Now we've got some interesting things starting to go on here and I think it will be a more appropriate size. So I'll sew these additions on and be right back. I've sewn everything together and now I'm ready to start working on the neckline. I've chosen two coordinating neckties that are quite a bit darker than my poncho. My poncho is really light and so I want to introduce some contrast for visual interest. To apply the neckline, I'm going to just overlap this dark necktie along the straight edge of the poncho and stitch, stitch, stitch down till the necktie runs out. At that point, I'm going to take the second necktie that I chose, overlap it with the first, stitch a diamond shape, and then just keep stitching along down to the end of the poncho. When I get to the end, I'll trim it, and then I'll fold everything in half so that that other dark necktie is here and overlap ag again. I'll stitch up until about 14 inches from the end so that I'm leaving a neck opening. Now it's time to try the poncho on and see what it looks like so far and think about what kind of design changes we might like to make. This is my assistant, Chaska Peru. Say hello, Chaska. Hello. So the poncho will go on in four different styles. The first style is with the dark seam down one shoulder. The second style is with the dark seam running down the center. The third style is with the dark seam down the other shoulder. And the fourth style is with the dark seam running down the back, creating a cowl neck in the front. So you may have noticed in each of the four styles, they're pretty close to nice, but something's maybe a little off. We can find some things to pick. So I like to work with each of the four styles in turn, making design adjustments um, so the eye moves around in a pleasant way and the poncho is figure flattering. So let's start with the side drape look first. What I notice in this style is that I really like what's going on with the hem around in this area and the neckline. But there are these two great big green diagonal spots that really catch my eye. They seem like large shapes that are a little inappropriate or not as flattering. And so I'm going to try and break up uh, that large chunk there by using some of my leftover pieces and also bringing in some of the dark material to create some contrast in the body of the poncho and kind of tie the body in with this dark stripe that I've added. So I'm gonna spend a little time messing around with necktie scraps, um, placing them around on the poncho on while it's while Chaska's wearing it so that I can kind of see how it looks. And then I'll stitch those down and we'll try it again. All right, well, after quite a bit of monkeying around, pinning and unpinning, sewing and unsewing, taking Cheska's hair off and putting it back on again, I ended up here. I've added quite a few patches of the leftover necktie scraps. Sometimes I flipped them upside down. For example, this area here is actually the reverse side or the wrong side of the necktie that's showing. It adds some new patterning, but keeps it coordinated since they're the exact same neckties. I also introduced one new necktie. This one is dark, but has little golden flecks to it. I feel like that helps create a bridge between the dark neckline seam and the light poncho. I trimmed this area a little bit since the fabric was sticking out more than I liked. And I added some patchwork in here. It's, this used to be a golden stripe. 
Um, so I feel pretty satisfied with it. I like the dark stripes up near the face. I think that helps bring the focus back up to uh, the neckline and the face and, and where we'd like to have the eye go. So I'm going to stop with this view and move on to the next one where the dark neckline runs down the center of the body. You may notice that this view has a different appearance than the last time we looked at it because of the sewing that I just did. So now there are blue stripes along this left hand side. There are some additional patchwork designs and I really like what's going on with that. There's this focus that's up near the face. Um, I feel like this is, is really pleasing. I may add some additional dark material down here at the hip area. But other than that, I probably will leave both of these sides pretty much the way they are. What I'm most concerned with in this view is this dark expanse right down the center. I want to think about ways of breaking that up a little bit and tying this center area in with the rest of the poncho so it looks more harmonious, looks closed in the middle. I'll probably uh, think about adding some kind of a shape in here that again is near the face and might imply sort of a tunic neckline. At the same time that I'm working on that, I am going to permanently sew the neck opening there so that that's nice and secure. It seems like it's a pretty good size. So I'm going to take a look at the neckties that I have left and see what I can work up. I didn't do a whole lot to this view. I did add a piece of dark blue at the hip and created a series of patchwork pieces down the center here to break up the blue area and bring the focus up to the face. I like how there's a lot of detail going down the left hand side, but the right hand side is still fairly quiet. So I'm going to leave this view as is and move on to the next one where the dark blue seam is going down the opposite shoulder. What I notice in this view is that my eyes are really drawn downward on the body. These yellow areas catch my eye and there are some large patches at the hip that bring the eye downward. Also this large piece here that ends at the belly. So I'm going to try and break up those big chunks a little bit and add some detailing up closer to the face to bring the eye up um, towards the top of the poncho. And just like on the other side view, I'm going to try and bring in some of the dark pieces as accents to tie the neckline in with the body of the poncho. Phew! That was a challenging view, wasn't it, Chaska? It sure was! But we got it done. So I added quite a bit of patchwork up near the face to bring the focus up here and I broke up these strong yellow pieces down at the bottom by adding in necktie strips in the middle of them so that they made kind of two thin yellow strips instead of a great big thick ones. I also added in more yellow so that it was more commonplace and didn't catch the eye so much. So I feel pretty satisfied with how this view looks now and it's time to tackle the last one where the dark blue stripe goes down the back. I feel like this view is pretty close to being okay. My eye does kind of go to the center area here with the yellow and kind of some eye-catching elements at, right at the bust line. So. I'm going to break up this yellow space in a real similar way that I did to the last uh, view. And then I'll probably add in a little more dark blue up here to kind of um, complement this dark blue stripe and, and this over here again to just lift the focus from here up a little closer to the face. I didn't do a whole lot to this view. I did break up the yellow by adding a necktie strip through the center of it. I added a little bit more yellow so that it wouldn't be so unusual and eye-catching. And then I added a little sprinkling of some additional blue stripes to bring the focus up to the face. Overall, I did quite a bit on each of the views, so I'm going to give the poncho one check spin um, and look through all the views and just make sure that everything still looks okay. Here's view one.
here's view two, here's view three, and here's view four. Each of the views seems balanced visually and has the focus up near the face, so I'm ready for the last step. I'm gonna sew around the entire outer edge of the poncho, just to make sure that all the seams are secure there, and sew around the neckline as well. Then I'm gonna throw the poncho into the washing machine and the dryer. I want to let all of the loose fuzz and threads rinse away, and also create an opportunity for all these raw edges to fray and soften. I wanna be able to trim away the extra frayed edges that um, unravel in the wash. And I also want to double check just to make sure that my stitching is all good and giving the poncho a good washing and drying will help me make sure that everything says it should be. Here's the completed necktie poncho. I'm just going to give Chaska a spin here so that you can see it from all angles. It's been washed and dried and trimmed. So you can see there's lots of nice soft texture around the frayed raw edges of the necktie pieces. And this poncho is ready to be worn and enjoyed, maybe by you. Hey, listen, if you like the idea of a necktie poncho, but you don't have time to make one yourself right now, head on over to nancygammon.com to check out the current selection of handmade accessories. And if you do have a stash of neckties that belong to someone dear to you, and you'd like for me to make something special just for you, please contact me. Do 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 do